Toad stands by. When Oliver came home again, the trucks sang rude songs. They were led by Scruffy, a private owner wagon. Oliver's no use at all, thinks he's very clever, says that he can manage us, that's the best joke ever. When he orders us about with the greatest folly, we just push him down the well, goes old Ollie. The engines bumped them. Shut up, they ordered. But they couldn't be everywhere, and everywhere they weren't, the trucks began again. At last they gave it up. We're sorry, Oliver, they said. It's really my fault, he answered sadly. I'm worried, Mr. Douglas, said Toad next morning. This nasty spirit of disrespect for engines. Where's it going to end? Dear knows, said Douglas gloomily. It must be stopped before it gets worse. I believe Mr. Oliver can do it. Maybe so. But oh, I have a plan, Mr. Douglas. May I stay here today and help him? We are both great western and must stand together. Would you ask him before you go to favour me with a word? I'll take you to him, but he's all a small for the work you have in mind. No, Duck, Toad's right. This trouble's my fault, and I must put it right. I meant no disrespect, you understand. Of course not, Toad. Anyway, driver says the same, and he's arranged it with Station Master. Very well, Oliver, but I must hurry. My passengers will be waiting. Don't forget Stepney's tip about sand. Lay it on the rails as you back down, and roll it firm with your wheels. You get a splendid grip that way. Good luck. We three will be there to cheer you on while you give those trucks a lesson. So long, smiled Oliver bravely, but he felt dreadfully nervous inside. I expect, Mr. Oliver, you'll want me on the middle road as a stop block, like. Uh, yes, please. Oliver marshalled the worst trucks two by two in front of Toad. This way, Mr. Oliver, takes longer, but they can't give trouble. And if you leave that scruffy till last, you'll have him behind you. Then you can bump him if he starts his nonsense. Duck arrived to find them ready and waiting. Three cheers for Oliver and Toad, he called. Alice and Mirabel responded with a will, and so wonderingly did the passengers. Oh, back, whispered Scruffy. The trucks giggled as they passed the word. Oliver dug his wheels into the sand and gave a mighty heave. Whoa, groaned Scruffy. His couplings tightened. He was stretched between Oliver and the trucks. I don't like this. Go it, yelled Duck. Well done, boy. Well done. Ow, ow, wailed Scruffy, but no one bothered about him. Ow, ow, I'm, I'm coming apart. There came a rending, splitting crash. Oliver shot forward suddenly. Scruffy's front end bumped behind his bunker, while Scruffy's load spread itself over the track. Well, Oliver, so you don't know your own strength. Is that it? No, no, no sir said Oliver nervously. The fat controller inspected the remains. As I thought, he remarked, rotten wood, rusty frames, unserviceable before it came. He winked at Oliver and whispered, don't tell the trucks that. Bad for discipline. He strode away, chuckling. Nowadays, Oliver only takes trucks when the other engines are busy, but they always behave well. Take care with Mr. Oliver, they warn each other. He's strong, he is. You play tricks on him, and he'll likely pull you in half. <laughs>